record it too and I forgot so oh, we're good it's recording now so we're good to go I think I was doing it from my phone and sometimes that doesn't work so thank you so much for your patience oh no worries first of all you were a delight you last time so no problem oh, okay. that's what I'd like to hear did you get a yeah. haircut by the by chance yeah I just I it's really cute it. no it's so cute I was like something's different and meanwhile I got extension so we switched I love it nice okay well let's just get right into it this is better anyways because now we're comfortable with each other. I know how to say your name. This is <laughs> the reason. Um, so I just wanted to do an intro. What's up world? It's your girl Shakira, two times with Shaq with the facts and I am interviewing the lovely, talented Kylie Spark today. How's it going today, love? It's going amazing. That Thanks is for having me. Yeah, so every time we speak, you're literally in paradise. So we have to comment on that first of all, because Tell, yeah, yes, give us a tour. No, uh, tell the lovely people, uh -oh. oh, perfect. Tell the lovely people where you are today, where you're located. I'm on the big island of Hawaii. Amazing. Um, yeah, Amazing. I love it. <laughs> it. Makes LA look like Montana or something. So you're doing great. Uh, <laughs> so let's get right into it. I know you are a recording artist and a songstress. Um, let's talk Passageways. It just premiered earlier uh, in April. Um, and the song is super unique, super memorable. Tell us what writing the song was like. Well, it's a, it's a very romantic love song. And I guess I, when I first started writing it, I didn't have a person in mind for the song. I was just more going off of a feeling. And I had been watching a lot of Bollywood movies during that time. And Bollywood movies are super romantic, like dramatic love stories. And I kind of, went off of that feeling like oh that would be that would be something to have a love like that so I started to write the song and um I didn't finish it but then shortly after I met somebody and fell in love with them and thought, oh that's who this song was about let me go ahead and finish it so beautiful. <laughs> thank you yes so do you think the special somebody will be a muse in the future or maybe they've already been since um new, new work coming out yeah, so the the relationship or love didn't really pan out as I had hoped at first, but I did write lots of songs about this person and like most of my love songs on the album are about this guy. <laughs> okay, it's giving it's giving me Taylor Swift vibes. You know, she writes about all of her all her loves. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, those those experiences, the things that you go through in life are what I, my favorite artists have been through so much because they, you know, they have so many things they can write about. So I love it. Now I know that in a recent interview, Kylie, you were called a true poet. And I think that rings true. When I listened to Passageways, it brought me back to a time where I was falling in love and I could like vividly picture it. You know, when you hear an epic song and it takes you back to a specific time, you remember what you were wearing. You remember what the room smelled yes. like. <laughs> That's what your music does. And I love that. So um, I, for, for you, how who inspires you to be such a good songwriter who who do you look up to when it comes to writing um to painting that picture i really look up to connor oberst which is the musician in bright eyes i love his songwriting it's yeah it does it evokes emotions in me and his songs they range from like really happy to like morbid yeah but they're great and also jewel she was a big influence growing up and i she's a great songwriter as well definitely speaking of jewel you've been compared to both her and taylor swift how does that make you feel that makes me feel very happy because <laughs> i think they're both very talented for sure and for sure. that's like that's very flattering that somebody would <laughs> make exactly. that comparison you're doing something right yeah. right so i know that you kind of just told us who some of your biggest music inspos were do you have any um any um, inspirations outside of music? I know you said you know you've you've used your love story as a muse, but are there any people, um, family members, friends, people you've come across that inspire you in your music? Yeah, for sure. Um, my my grandma and I call her my Oma because she's she's German. She's 101 years old. Oh my god! And she's like she's gone through so much stuff in her life, but she's she's always been like really positive person and just full of love and kindness no matter what and i find that to be really inspiring yeah um, i don't i don't know anybody that old so that's awesome <laughs> that is amazing yeah she's um, still sharp as a tack too oh that's incredible love. runs in the family girl you're gonna live to be 110 
This is what it feels like <laughs> to me. Uh, now, you're, let's get into the debut album because it's on its way. It's uh, launching or coming out my one of my favorite months in June, which is right around the corner. And it is called Savor This. Um, please tell us why you named it this. I named it Savor This. Um, well, first of all, there's a song on the album named Savor This, and that's about um being in a romantic situation where it's your last night with somebody because maybe you're moving or you have to break up for whatever reason I mean just like this is might be our last moments together let's savor this but from that I got the idea for the album name and that's more speaking to like life in general savoring the present moments and the the journey the destination is great and like having goals and stuff but I've really come to appreciate that everything is now and to, to savor the moment. Yeah, definitely. As cliche yeah. as we sound, it's so important. It's so important. So I love it. I love the title. I think it's attention grabbing. I'm sure that's what you were going for. Uh, so that's perfect. But let's dig a little deeper beyond the music because I spoke earlier and said, I know some of my favorite artists have been through hell and back and have a crazy story to tell. Now you, uh, you grew up in, uh, you grew up Mormon um, in North California and you left the church in your early twenties. Tell us what your upbringing was like and how that affected um, the woman you are today and the artist that you are today. Hmm. Yeah, I was, I was raised Mormon, <laughs> which seems like a whole other like Warm reality at this time. That's like completely, but it definitely helped shape me into who I am today in a lot of ways. I think it made me um really introspective about like why am i this like human being in this meat suit on this star planet <laughs> and yeah i kind of gets questioning things of like a um the grand scheme of the universe which you can find in a lot of my my songs is more like uh I don't know if I'm describing it how I how I want to like a bird's eye view on this yeah, life in reality. You're open minded. You're yeah. Open -minded. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. And I also hear that you have both beauty and brains. You have a bachelor's degree. How did you incorporate your music during your time in college? Because I don't know about you, but I really struggled to remain creative while studying and while being a part of school. So how the heck yeah. do you balance the two? Yes. Um, so I actually have a master's degree too, which, oh. which the only point of that I feel right now is to be able to be like, oh yeah, I have a master's degree because I don't, I don't like <laughs> use it for anything. But um, music, I, I always continued to write songs and music, but there were definitely periods where it was kind of put on the back burner because I was too caught up in school and all the little things involved in that. Right, right, totally understandable. Now, did you ever pursue a career in anthropology? Because I took an anthropology class in college and I barely passed. So kudos for getting your degree in that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, no, I, I didn't. I, actually, that was sort of the plan. Um, and then quarantine happened and the whole virus thing. and. So I'm like, well, whatever. I'm gonna just do my music now. <laughs> May right. as well I'm focus on my music. <laughs> yeah. That's and I had like I had some some jobs where my anthropology um, education was put to good use. One of my jobs was working at a nonprofit as a case manager that assisted the homeless population and finding housing. And that was that was a really great experience, really eye opening and. I'm glad that I was able to, to do that. Yeah, that sounds absolutely amazing. And I love how all your answers are segueing into my next question. It's like we've done this before or something. <laughs> but no, um, I heard, speaking of quarantine, that you actually enjoyed it. You used it as, you know, uh, an avenue to create more and to kind of make connections with your music. Did you, right. by chance, learn any new skill sets or hobbies during lockdown? Sure. Yeah, um, after quarantine started, I... I learned to ferment things, sauerkraut and vegetables. And I'd been wanting to do that for a while because I love I love sauerkraut and basically anything fermented 
Okay. So that's one of my, that's one of the things that I started to do in addition to making more music. Yes. So I know that the world is reopening again. We're all so excited. You can tap into those creative avenues and uh, just have, just basically watch your fan base explode because you're able to do live performances again. Now, I know you've already done a few, but tell us what you have planned for the rest of the year, as much as you can tell us. I'm not sure in the way of live, of live shows. Yeah. Um, but hopefully I would, I would love to get out and about as the world starts to open up more and do some, do some shows. Okay. Now, again, you've got your debut project, Savor This, releasing very, very soon, next month to be exact. Do you have any favorite songs on the project? I do. Almost all of them are my favorite. Good answer. She's like, I wrote them. I love them all. <laughs> No, I really, I really like this song, Sparkle and Shine. It's a song that I co-wrote with the producer of my album, Bub Pratt. We just kind of went back and forth, um, sending recordings to each other. And it's a super like upbeat, happy song. And I think it's impossible to listen to that song and not like smile or feel, feel happy. Right, to not sparkle and shine, right? That's awesome. Right. <laughs> Now, before I let you go, Kylie, please let the people know where they can follow you in your journey. Oh, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, it's Kylie underscore Spark. And also Facebook, you can just search Kylie Spark Music. And my website's KylieSparkMusic.com. You can pre-order my album. It's only $7.00. Pre-order it, you, you have nothing to lose. It's great, you're a great artist, uh, super unique sound. I'm really excited for you. Thanks again Thank for you. doing this with me, part two. Um, and again, this is a Shack with the Facts exclusive with Miss Kylie Spark. Thanks, Kylie. Thank you. Awesome.